Hey scientists, let's talk about relationships in ecosystems. Have ever been eating and stopped to wonder why? Energy. You and all other living organisms need energy to survive. You get all of your energy from a variety of foods that you eat, like hamburgers, chicken strips, and even salad. But let's think, where did those delicious lettuce bites get their energy from? From the sun. Yup, our sun. All of the energy that living things use and eat comes from the sun. The sun's energy is used by plants or producers to make and produce their own energy. Plants use a process called photosynthesis to convert sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into energy. Plants can then be eaten or consumed by consumers. Consumers are organisms that eat to get energy. Consumers aren't just limited to eating producers or plants though. They can also eat other consumers as well. There are even organisms that get their energy from eating dead material. They're called decomposers because they take dead material and decompose it into smaller pieces and soil. Let's take a look at a local park to see producers, consumers, and decomposers interacting. Okay, let's look for some producers. I see a lot of grass. Grass is a producer that makes its own energy from the sun using photosynthesis. Now, let's find something that eats grass, a consumer. <gasps> hey, there's a cricket. Now, he's a consumer because he has to eat the grass to get his energy. So let's draw an arrow from the grass to the cricket, following the flow of energy. Since the cricket is getting the energy, the arrow points to him. Now, let's find a bird that eats crickets. A finch is also a consumer since he has to eat to get energy. What we've made now is a food chain. But nature isn't that clean and easy. Instead of these three organisms, like in our park, there would actually be hundreds of more organisms. Let's say the finch also eats nuts from the trees. And maybe a snake comes along and eats some crickets. But he also comes and eats our bird friend. Aw, goodbye bird friend. And maybe there's a hawk circling around that also eats birds and snakes. And then on top of that, when all of these organisms die, their bodies are broken down and decomposed by bacteria, worms, and fungi. Now what we've made is a food web, which is a network of food chains that follow the flow of energy in an ecosystem. All of these organisms have close relationships to each other. Let's take away our decomposers and see what would happen to our food web if one of our animals disappeared. Let's say for whatever reason our finch disappears. It could be from human causes or it could be from natural causes. But let's see what would happen to our food web. Now, half of what the snake eats would be gone, so our numbers of snakes would decrease. And half of what our hawks would eat would be gone, so their numbers would decrease. In addition to that, we would also have an effect on the nuts and the crickets because they are not being eaten by the bird. So if you take one animal or one organism out of a food web, it causes drastic changes. Let's take a look at a question. 